Hi, let's do more practice on energy level. Go and check out question four and question five. Pause the video, try it yourself, and I'll explain to you later. A few moments later. Okay, question four is asking you why the distance between the emission lines of hydrogen decrease as we move to the right. So that is to say, referring to the emission spectrum, you can see the purple lines on the right. The separation between them are closer comparing to, for example, the red to the blue one, which has a much bigger gap. To explain this, you can use the energy level diagram, which is also provided by the test book. But I find you only have four levels there, so you can go online to find out some other diagram which has shown you many more. So here is an example. And on the left, it is for hydrogen. On the right, it's for mercury. So let's just look at hydrogen. You can see uh, from n equal to 1, which is the ground level, all the way up to n equals to 6. So you got a few more, you can see. And interestingly, you should find it's getting closer and closer together when you move higher up in the energy level. Not to mention, when it is uh, the fifth excited level, that means n equals to 6, the energy is negative 0.38 eV and of course there are many more energy level above which you can imagine is going to be less and less and less and less and so in this case the wavelength that is getting emitted would have a smaller difference in terms of energy and that's why you will see many more color band or light band on the right hand side and by the way, when you see the word ionization here, this is referring to when you reach n equals to infinity. That means you have already got enough energy. That is exactly 13.6 eV here because this is zero. This is negative 13.6. So the difference is positive 13.6 eV. If you can get that much of energy, to the electron because this is about electron how much energy the electron of that atom would get right if you can get that much of energy that electron will be removed will be ripped off from the atom and that is simply what we have learned about ionization in IGCSE ionization basically means the electron which were supposed to revolving around the atom become free to move right they are no longer revolving they could be go to other places and become ions however you may say that hey maybe the scientists actually look at the emission spectrum and then come up with this energy level right because we cannot really see those levels those levels are actually kind of make up by the scientists the one that we actually observe is the emission spectrum so isn't it sound like a self-fulfilling or self-proving logic where you use this to explain the energy level and the energy level explain the emission spectrum? Well, of course, physicists are good thinkers and therefore we are not going to make that kind of logical fallacy. The energy level of the hydrogen was actually derived using some fundamental law of physics by Niels Bohr and eventually he came up with the equation like this okay unfortunately if you are study, studying in SL you're not going to um, get to study this in chapter 7 because this is in the actual topic chapter 12 however if you are interested uh, make sure you go and check it out and yeah it's actually quite amazing that his prediction was very very accurate okay let's move on to question 5 5a asking you uh, explain the term ground state so it basically means the energy level with the least possible energy so that's the wording you can uh, go for for b uh, and c actually this question is very good because uh, it will help you understand after you try this question b is asking you with 10 0.4 eV you can see in C part is also 10.4 eV but the difference is that part B is talking about the energy of the photon while C is the energy of a beam of electron 
okay so it's asking you if these are directed to the hydrogen gas in ground state suggest uh, what happened to the hydrogen and here's the answer for photon if your energy is not exactly the energy difference because if you look at the energy level again you can at most have 10.2 if you look at 13.6 and 3.4 the difference is 10.2 however the one that you get from this question is 10.4 so it doesn't really match if the energy level doesn't match nothing happened or you may say what happened is simply that photon will pass through the atom no interaction at all and no absorption and of course there's no emission uh, would happen it just passed through it so nothing happened uh, because the energy level doesn't match all right you can expand this into a sentence as for the electron however because they are electron they are not photon so the property will be different that the electron can interact with the electron on the atom on the hydrogen atom so it's a bit like a billy ball like what you learn in momentum a ball that is colliding to a ball it is not necessarily to have all the energy transfer to the ball you can transfer part of the energy and so what happened after collision is maybe this ball will kind of bounce back and then transfer those energy to the ball so imagine this is uh, from the atom this is from the beam all right of course both are electron 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 all right but this is the one in the atom not in but nearby the atom uh, originally and this is the external beam of electron shooting towards it with 10.4 eV okay and so since you know the energy level that you could have could be 10.2 so that could be one possibility that the electron near the atom will have received and absorbed 10.2 eV or of course the direction here is just for illustration they are not really going left to right all right they are absorbing energy go to a higher excited state and of course later on they will re-emit again but this is the idea and so the electron from the beam is going to maintain to get the remaining energy that is 0.2 eV okay so this is a like a similar idea not necessarily going to right I think I mean if you really want try to think it as a momentum then you should actually go to the left inside but anyway it doesn't really matter for the energy it's just how it distributes so for electron it does not need to be a specific energy as long as it had enough there is a chance that it will give is enough energy to those electron on the atom that's why it's called a beam of electron not one single electron one single electron may may or may not be successful but if you have a beam at least one or two or it will have been successful and of course you can further talk about after the electron on the atom receive 10.2 eV it will get excited and uh, sooner or later it will emit it back and get back to the ground state so you can say oh there will be a photon of 10.2 eV uh, being emitted later on as well all right before we end let me give you one extra question to think about and this is quite important to understand too here is a diagram for the hydrogen energy level and you can see I only include the first to the fifth number that is the fourth excited level and let's say you can excite this hydrogen atom to whatever level you like and then let it to relax doing the relaxation and then emit the photon my question is how many different photons as in it could be different frequency or different energy or different um, wavelength is all the same right how many different photons can be emitted try to think about it tell me your answer in number numbers obviously done in the comment section below. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.